Sorry, I'm sitting on my battery pack. I'm just oh, glad yeah. you didn't put me in my underwear over there. <laughs> um, we didn't ask you for your walk-up music, actually. We should, have, we should have done it. Zubin, thank you so much for, for joining us at Sports Matters. Pleasure, and good morning to everyone. I've been trying to get you here for a while. Um, also, because you were once my boss, do I have to be really nice to you? That would be a good start. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Look, you're, you're, you're um, Fox, one of the most powerful broadcasters in Asia Pacific. Uh, three years ago when we did the first Sports Matters, uh, you had just broken, uh, you just pulled Fox Sports away from the previous partnership with ESPN. Um, what, were the, what were the goals you had then? How are we doing now? And, and where are we heading for the next, the next three years? Yeah, three years been, feels longer than it has been, I guess. Um, uh, I'm older, maybe not wiser. Um, and my wallet is significantly slimmer, thanks to some of the people in this room. Uh, but uh, it's been a good, exciting experience. Um, when we took it over, uh, we were people who, you know, none of the FIC people really had worked in a sports business. Um, I am a great, devout follower of Formula One, but that's about the only sport I really follow. Um, so there was a lot of skepticism around whether we could do a good job or not. Um, and we were, of course, very cocky and said, oh, we've done it all before. It's, you know, it's a channel business just like any other. Um, and we were wrong. Uh, it isn't the same exactly. Uh, we learned a lot, less, lot of lessons along the way. Uh, but I think we went step by step, uh, executed in a certain sensible manner, and we've come out good. Um, if you look at the, the, you know, I think what we did is we put the consumer at the center of the business because it's always challenging your sports business. As you know, it's a low margin business and it's very tempting to get carried away tactically to do short term things. Um, but we said, okay, let's focus on giving an addictive experience to the consumer. So we went about very systematically. We started with the content because it's all about the live content, obviously. Um, we were lucky or uh, prescient, I'm not sure, but we ended up tying up all of our rights for the next five to seven years, which is a good thing given some of your slides. Um, but we bolstered that with investing in production. Rohit De Silva, who's here, somehow managed to convince me to spend gazillions of dollars on some new studio uh, with a fancy touch screen. I don't know why, I think I can do the same thing on iPad, but somehow it's a big screen helps. Um, but we spent a, a lot of effort and energy into creating a good production outfit. So now uh, we can do a lot more in our studio, but we also send our crews on site, which allows us to you know, get talent that we might not otherwise show on our screen, like Roger Federer and French Open, etc. cetera. Um, we invested in creating five hubs from where we make our sports channels as opposed to just having one. So we are closer to the audience, uh, hopefully. We have feeds in every single one of our markets now, dedicated feeds, so we can cater the product to the audience, but we can also give our advertisers uh, a great option. They can choose one market, two markets, or 14, right? Um, we expanded our footprint to all of Asia Pac. So most recently, we announced a launch of our channels in uh, Korea, which is a big, big thing for us because it fills a hole in our distribution. So now we have a presence everywhere, and that obviously allows us to give a much better seamless experience both to our consumers but also to the people in this audience, the rights holders. You, know, you look at what we've done with Bundesliga, for example, which is of course a deal that's not just for Asia but about 80 countries around the world. Um, I was just shocked by a statistic. I said, Rohit, can you check this again? Because last year apparently 1% of people in Malaysia tuned into Bundesliga. This year it was 28%. You know, so it's pretty incredible. Um, and I think that's a tribute to the fact that we can put it as part of our network, which is 20 plus brands, cross promote the hell out of it. Um, we have infrastructure in every single market around APAC where we can market it well. Um, we had, um, uh, you know, a very high degree of production ability, all of that stuff. So I think it's worked out well. Uh, from an affiliate point of view, I would, I like to say we've moved from a net negative to somewhere between mildly positive to fairly strong. Um, and I think by which you mean, uh, but what I mean is that uh, the value we bring to the affiliates, um, when we sort of started this business, there was a perception that we were charging too much, etc. Um, and I think that that because of all the things we've done over time, whether it's content or production or languages, we are in seven languages now. Um, that that needle we've moved it to. Um, 
somewhat of a higher degree of uh, whether willingness or need to pay more, to, uh, which ultimately we pump back into the ecosystem. And, and by affiliate, for those who don't understand uh, the broadcast business affiliate, you mean cable operator platform, platform digital partners. platform. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, you know, and, and that is changing too, that part of the ecosystem, because I think the future affiliate or platform partner won't just be the cable operator or DTH player, obviously. It will be, you know, virtual platforms, whether they're telcos, um, you know, Samsung over here, we've done a, an arrangement with them in the Philippines where we um, show our sports channels through their um, smart TVs, etc. So just, just set the scene for, for Fox Sports within the group. How big is Fox in, in Asia Pacific now? And, and just so everyone knows, uh, Zubin isn't responsible for India, so we won't probably talk that much about India today. But where, where, every, outside of India, where, where are you and, and the, the rest of the Fox network? And How big, if you ask my boss, is not big enough. Um, uh, but uh, uh, we, have, we have operations in 14 countries in APAC, uh, including a relatively small operation in India. As Jasper says, Star, our sister company, is really the lead business in India. Um, we have about 30 brands. In any given market, we would have 20 plus brands across four or five categories. Uh, the most important categories for our business are sports, of course, through Fox Sports, um, National Geographic, which is our factual documentary business, uh, Fox, which is our um, Hollywood um, series, shows business, and Fox Movies. Um, and obviously the Chinese business that we have, which is fairly significant too. So we have a variety of businesses. Um, and I think the biggest asset we probably have is the fact that we have our brands, National Geographic, Fox, Fox Sports. Uh, these are powerful global brands that you know, consumers uh, take to very easily. Uh, and of course, we have about 1,300 people in these 14 offices, which is a lot of infrastructure on the ground. So it's a, it's a varied business with um, sort of a portfolio approach. And often I'm asked, who's your competitor? And it's difficult to say because we are the only ones playing across so many categories. So there goes my next question. Um, okay, so, so that's where I knew you, you wanted to ask. I, 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 well, let's let's get to that. But but um, you, know, you talked about where where we've come in the last three where you've come in the last three years. Um, the next three, where, where's that going? Because there's, I mean, technology is going crazy. China's going crazy. The world is going crazy. Where, where are you going to be in in 2018? Yeah, actually, it did strike me. I heard you talk about you know, is this business sustainable? I don't think it's about sustainability. I think it's about growth. Because the business is nowhere near where it needs to be yet uh, as an industry, I think. Uh, certainly, because we are in Southeast Asia, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, you know, it, pay television is relatively uh, low, uh, low penetration. Um, and um, I think for sports to truly flourish, it does need a subscription stream of revenue as well as an advertising stream of revenue. So it's going to need pay television to do well to really succeed. And if pay television is somewhere between 10 and 20% in both, most markets, then there is a huge headroom to grow. So I think we look forward to exploiting that. So at one end, we kind of say, OK, let's look at the distribution side. How do we get from 10, 20% penetration of sports or pay television to a much higher number? And on the other side, we recognize that you're only going to really do that if you have local content. Um, so we have to get, if not local content, certainly local stars to do well. And that's something we are working on. Do you have any examples of local content and the investments you're making? Well, for now, the, in, we've certainly put in a fair amount of investment in the acquisition of local content. So we, for example, have CPBL, which is the leading uh, sport, a baseball sport league in uh, Taiwan. Uh, we have HBL there. Uh, we have badminton in Indonesia. Uh, we have AFC for soccer. Um, so there's, there's a whole lot of local content that we've sort of done, uh, put, put uh, money on into. But obviously the next step is to actually try to drive the product itself. And to do that, we have to either have some sort of long-term partnership with a local league or some sort of ownership perhaps where we help, help create the product itself. Uh, we've done that very well in Europe. Uh, more recently, our sister company Star has done that in India with Kabaddi, which a lot of you might be familiar with. Um, and we are working on several projects here in this part of the world. So there's I, a lot of I, rights holders here, yeah. a lot of industry, a lot of sports associations as well. So are you saying you've got a checkbook and you're ready to talk to them or are you open for business with, with lo more local sports in Asia? I'm going to take your checkbook and work with them. Ro Rohit's got the checkbook. <laughs> uh, well, there's not an open checkbook, certainly. 
uh, it all has to make business sense eventually. But we recognize that international product can only get us that far. We bought ourselves, I think, air cover, if I can call it that, for the next five to 10 years by having these rights. But ultimately, if we really want a strong business, we have to have product that's homegrown with local stars that people identify with. And so that's a long gestation business that we also have to look at. You mentioned the, 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 the word pay TV. Um, and television, how do you define pay TV? I mean, is, is this just blurring into screens and content delivery? How, do, how, how would you define pay television? Yeah, I think you have to broaden the definition of pay television from what it's originally been, which was linear television channels uh, that consumers pay for. I think it's anything that a consumer is willing to pay for is pay television. Anything not an OTT service, which is pay, is pay television to me. And are you offering on-demand services as well? We do. So we have on-demand services for all of our products. Uh, we have uh, an online player uh, for our movie products, our television shows, our Chinese movies, as well as sports. Uh, you can actually, um, if you're a subscriber of any of our paid television partners, uh, whether it's, let's say, for example, here in Singapore, Startup or uh, Singtel, uh, you can log on to Fox Sports Play uh, and you can get this app or on our website and pretty much see all of our three channels live streaming as well as clips, highlights, uh, multiple camera angles that you can't see on, on the big screen, uh, you know, accompaniment stats, all of that. And that, that I think is the longer term uh, vision. You have to have that ability to go multi-screen and give those extra value added services. But perhaps we have to also figure out a way to go beyond the traditional pay TV ecosystem of 10, 20, 30% and find a way to go to consumers who might want sport but don't want everything else. So are you the person to ask for for a free subscription for the Rugby World Cup in Hong Kong? No, okay. The, 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 if you know me by right. now, we'll nothing's do, free. We'll do that tonight on the terrace. Um, you, you talk about being consumer centric and, 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 and I think you know, clearly being on demand is, is one part of that strategy. Are there any other things you can talk about in terms of what you're doing for the consumer that differentiates Fox and Fox Sports from the competition? Yeah, I, we have to play to our strengths. And our strengths are the fact that we have a global brand, um, which is well known and loved. Uh, we have global scale, which allows us to buy product in a certain way, promote it really well. Um, and um, you know, we have expertise from all around the world uh, in terms of production. And I think the best example is what we've done, as I said earlier, with uh, Bundesliga. Um, and you know, again, that's a fairly strategic play for us because we were tired of these three-year cycles, frankly. Um, so we decided to make a long-term bet with Bundesliga and I think uh, it's been a good partnership because the product inherently is incredibly strong. Um, you know, it's very well attended in the stadiums, it's a well-financed league, the football quality is very high, obviously. Uh, but what it perhaps needed was that little injection of uh, marketing savvy, which I think a partner like Fox can bring to the table. Uh, and that partnership seems to be working well, very well. It's only the first year yet. Uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, but we hope to be able to take that journey together and have a really strong product over the next three to four years. Okay, can you talk, can we drill down into what you're doing with Bundesliga? What, 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 what's interesting there? What, what, what's some of the activations you've got? And by the way, before, before you answer that, I'm going to throw to the floor soon. Um, we've got one of the most important broadcasters in Asia Pacific on stage here. So now's your chance. If you want to ask questions, uh, please start thinking them now. So Bundesliga. Jasper, you've never been so nice to me before. I'm not going to let them yeah, tear yeah, into you. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, so Bundesliga, I mean, to give you an example, we had 25,000 promos for Bundesliga uh, during this launch. 25,000. So you can imagine the value of that. Uh, but it goes beyond that. Uh, there's innovation. So for example, what we did, and we, this, we took from our um, sister company um, in uh, Germany, uh, when um, Sky Deutschland, they did this with Bundesliga, they, in the breaks on some of the other channels that we have in our portfolio, instead of running a promo of Bundesliga, we actually played the live match. And in fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, during one of the uh, such uh, live matches that we are showing, uh, there was a goal scored. So you know, that's an innovative way of bringing out the power of the network. Um, but beyond that, obviously, we did a lot of, um, put a lot of effort into the production, on-ground events, all of those things. But most importantly, perhaps, the ability to have a seamless, consistent experience for Bundesliga, wherever you go, that I think what it is lifting the game. Yeah. Um, okay, so going back to the affiliates that you mentioned earlier on, mm -hmm. um, and, your, and your platform partners, um, 
How does it work when you're selling to them, but they're also competing against you as well for, for rights? They've all, you know, now TV in, in Hong Kong's got how many sports channels, like nine sports channels or something, and Singtel and Starhub down here, and everywhere, you know, every cable operator or telco has its own sports bouquet. How, how does that relationship work when you're, you know, poacher and gamekeeper? We skirt around it. Um, we, we, are, uh, we are partners, but we are also competitors, as you correctly say. I think we've, uh, we have found a way to work together such that um, the partnership angle has been played out more than the competitive side, luckily, because there's a recognition that even if it's on our channels, ultimately it is going to their subscribers. Um, and ultimately that subscriber is our viewer as well as their, uh, you know, their cash cow. Um, so I think we, we work within that constraint. Um, don't forget that we have a very broad relationship that goes well beyond sports. We have relationships that go back 15, 20 years. So there's an element of trust and uh, working together that we've built. And that helps us get around a lot of hurdles. Uh, in fact, I would say it's worked out really well because we are now also in conversation with many of our platforms to do joint bits together sometimes um, so that we can bring more value overall. Um, you know, we are so prepared. Two, that's two checkbooks, everyone. Yeah, two half checkbooks, <laughs> two one third checkbooks. <laughs> My math was always bad. Uh, but, um, um, sorry. So, yeah, we're looking to do uh, bits together. Um, let's say, for example, sometimes we have more than one feed of a particular game. Uh, let's say uh, Wimbledon, sometimes you can get five, six feeds. There's no reason why we shouldn't put some of those feeds on our partners' channels, because that is bringing the game to a larger consumer audience, which is good for everybody, right? Um, we are, these uh, local leagues that we talked about, in every single case we are working with a partner. And in most cases they are one of our platform partners. Uh, because it's in their interest to give local sport a boost too. So that's how we're working together. Now, but surely with your own video player, is there a need for, the, for someone to sit in the middle? I mean, you can go direct to the consumer. I think there's absolutely a need because it's not just about getting the technical ability to deliver a signal. You know, you could always do that. but. Um, it is the sales and marketing and distribution that uh, the platform partners bring to the table, and that's not something to be underestimated in those challenges. So I think we do what we do well, which is curate product, create great brands, and promote well. Um, they do what they do well, which is you know market, distribute, and sell. You ever thought of going into politics? <laughs> Are you saying I'm lying? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, let, let's let's talk a little bit about. Um, the threats that are coming, whether they're positive or negative, but you know, mentioned China earlier on, um, and the there just seems to be a lot of hot. Or the, sorry, seems there is a lot of hot money coming out of China, not just for rights in China, but they're now stepping into other territories. There's this rumor of La TV buying Premier League for Hong Kong. Let's hear from Hang Yu tomorrow if he's willing to admit it or not. It's, it's rumoured they paid 400 million for the, the Premier League. Um, what kind of threat, you know, who are the threats at the moment? Is China a threat? Is it, where, where's that all going? Well, hopefully some of that money will come to us because we can sell them our services. Um, but look, they're a competitor like anybody else um, and an opportunity too. Um, we've often said, because don't forget, even before we were doing sports, we were doing the Chinese business. And we've often looked at it and said, China, mainland China, will be like the Hollywood to the rest of the world, right? In that its product ultimately will be so strong because they're pouring so much money and talent into it that it will be exported, uh, just like Korean product today is, uh, goes all over. So I think we are very familiar with that part of the story and have been preparing it for it for some time. Uh, but ultimately, obviously, they have a scale in China which is quite mind-boggling. Um, but you have to work to the each market. Each market has its own culture, its own way of doing things. So I'm sure they will have their challenges and opportunities just like we do. Uh, we work to our strengths, like I said, and the fact that we already have a well-established business with a big top line, you know, healthy financials, strong relations with our partners, brands, etc. You know, I think we have been in a good position. You mentioned brands. How important do you think in this this world? You know, we were talking about earlier on. You know, kids are just going to find content wherever they want it. How important is the brand? If, if I want to watch the Rugby World Cup, I'm just going to find it, right? Yeah, yeah I think that's a fair point. Um, I would say two things. One, the brand is incredibly important because it's a symbol of trust in many ways and an expectation from a consumer. 
but of course, depending on the category, brands are less or more important. Uh, arguably, in a category like music, which you're very familiar with, uh, perhaps brands mean everything because uh, you know each individual video um, is less of a franchise, let's say. Uh, probably sports is at the other extreme, where the shows or the franchises within the, um, the channel brand it themselves are so big, right? So um, I think it's a mixed bag. Uh, but even within sport, as we know, there is content and there's content. And there's a lot of must-have content sports, but there's also a lot of other content. And that needs to come out too. And so we run the danger if we only focus on the strong, well-known content to ignore all the rest, and then you won't have a healthy ecosystem. So I think brands matter there too. Okay, and, and obviously you want to go to your trusted channel to watch your favorite sport, right? I think so. It's a, you know, and there's a certain expectation of quality or whatever you want out of that brand, and that's we deliver that consistently. That's what it's about. Sure. Okay, let's, let's see what our friends, if they've had enough coffee to start asking questions yet. Uh, Robin. Do we have any microphones? There's one running, screaming down here from the back. It's like watching Usain Bolt going over hurdles. Hi, um, Robin Hicks from Umbrella. Um, Subin, I just wanted to ask about, um, you mentioned earlier on about the importance of local content and going local. Um, in the context of Southeast Asia, has Fox considered doing what, say, Sky has done in the UK, perhaps a, a, a weak comparison, but championing um, football, soccer, at a local level in Southeast Asia? Obviously, there's enormous potential, particularly in markets like Indonesia, Malaysia. I just wondered whether you guys had considered that um, and start a virtuous circle in the soccer industry in, in Southeast Asia. Absolutely. In fact, more than considered it. I think uh, it's no secret that... Uh, and it's a good example of partnership with a uh, platform partner. Um, we, we, as with, with uh, Astro, were uh, in the race to get the rights to the Malaysian Soccer League on a very long-term basis. Um, unfortunately, we didn't succeed in the end, but our game plan was exactly that, to pump a lot of money into the sport itself and make it much stronger and then hopefully build out a long-term path to having a very strong local product. Um, but that's the kind of thing we would look at and we are looking at more and more. Good question. Any more? It's very hard to see here, by the way. Any other, any other questions? For it's all the haze that you brought in. Yeah. There must be more questions. We've got the president of Fox. Is that Nick? No. Hi, it's Josh. Josh. Oh, Josh, sorry. It's very hard to see. It's OK. Um, Zubin, you mentioned that you guys went into Korea recently. Are there any other markets that are not in your footprint now that Fox is targeting to enter? We've actually completed pretty much our footprint now. We have uh, presence in Japan, Korea, uh, Taiwan, obviously, um, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam. Um, the markets we don't have a presence in directly are India, which is through our sister company Star, and Australia through our other sister company Foxtel. Um, and so the only one left really is China in any significant way, and that has its own obvious challenges. We will try to participate in China too, uh, probably not in the linear channel business uh, for obvious reasons, but there are other opportunities in China to work together uh, with the players there. Thank you. Welcome. Right at the back. <clears throat> You're going to get really fit today. Do we have more than one microphone? There we go. It's, it's heading over. Uh, hi, it's Mike from uh, Media Business Asia. Uh, thank you very much, Jasper and Zubin. Uh, just to follow up on the last question, uh, to find out a little bit more about um, plans for digital, uh, I wondered how much scope there is to do digital-only content um, rather than just sort of digital content that supports your linear channels. And that could also expand the sort of rights that open up to you when you've got that digital-only business. Is that something for today or further in the future? Well, given there are so many rights holders, I want to say that there is absolutely no money to be made in digital. Nah. Look, as I said, um, I think it's a medium to long-term play. Uh, it will take time, especially in sports, because the requirements for sports, streaming, etc., from a technical point of view also are more stringent than perhaps for entertainment content. Um, so down the road, certainly. 
I just see it as one more way to reach the consumer that we have, you know, be, because we haven't been able to reach them through the normal pay TV route, uh, which has its own challenges. Uh, so it's just that, nothing else. If you sort of um, had asked any of us in Fox three years ago, four years ago, you know, we would have looked and said, look, there's the US market, which is uh, utopia in a way, which is, uh, you know, it's a high ARPU, high penetration market. And if you plot the evolution of pay TV, you will see actually that almost every market around the world is somewhere on that graph and ultimately will become like the US, which is high ARPU, high penetration. Today, I don't think we would say that. Uh, clearly, that pay TV ecosystem isn't growing as fast as we'd like it to. So we have to find new ways to grow it. And this is just one more way digital, I think. Thanks, Mike. Any more questions? Um, Something you mentioned about being a consumer-centric uh, network. Um, we know that uh, the, you know, Le TV have gone into the consumer business. You know, they, have a, uh, they have bikes, they have technology that they're launching and stuff. Can you see Fox ever diversifying into non-content-related uh, businesses? Or have you done it already that we I may, may not Yeah, know you might be referring to, uh, or I don't know if you've seen it, but we had an annou announcement just last week, actually, uh, for National Geographic, uh, where we paid some $750 million to buy out um, the rights to all the non-channel-related media assets of the National Geographic. Um, along with our partners, uh, the National Geographic Society. Uh, that's a very important step in the de development of our business, we believe, because the world is moving, certainly in our industry, from being a pay TV linear channel business to being an intellectual property business. Uh, and then once you created that intellectual property, using perhaps your channels and uh, you know, other uh, video output that you have, you need to be able to exploit that in every possible way. I think, arguably, uh, Disney is the best uh, proponent of that, and there's something that we can learn from there. So with National Geographic, for example, now we will have the books division, we'll have the maps division, we'll have retail, um, we'll have education, a whole lot of other uh, products that synergize with our channel business. And I think, arguably, with sports, we have to look at it that way, too. Yeah? Um, I was with, um, I was with uh, Carlo, who runs Sky Cable in the um, Philippines, and he was like, when Hollywood windows everything, why can't sports be windowed like that? You know, why can't we take Wimbledon, of which he's, he's an ardent fan of Wimbledon, but why can't we take Wimbledon and show it six hours later on free to air also and create a larger opportunity there, given that in the Philippines, penetration again is in you know, low double digits. Um, so I think there's simple things we can do to bring sports alive. Um, last few minutes, the <clears throat> could you also see Fox going back into uh, the event management business. There was the grand plan 20 years ago when we first came here uh, that Rupert wanted to own not just the car, but the road that it drove on. Um, and I mean, look, we had a lot of fun doing some wonderful events, but can you see that strategy coming back into play? Yeah, I thought Rupert also wanted to own the mines that make the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I think that's, part, that's exactly what I'm talking about, is that if you created intellectual property, why not exploit it in every possible way? And I don't know, big way, small way, but certainly um, we already to some degree do it, because certainly when our sponsors are there, we try to give them that 360 degree experience online, on air, as well as on ground. Uh, but there's a way to do, uh, be more aggressive in that. Um, I think when we kind of looked at the business three years ago, we said, let's first make sure that we get the basics right. We've done that, now it's time to take the next step. So you're here for the long term? Yeah, at least our business is here for the long term. I don't know about me. Um, well, talk about that. What keeps Rupert awake at night? Uh, hopefully not FIC Asia. <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. Um, what keeps you know. awake at night? What, okay, what, 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 what's, what do you think are the biggest challenges for the next five years? And, and, and where, what where keeps are the, me awake at night is my kids. I'm wondering what they're up to when they're in school. <laughs> Um, look, for us, in all seriousness, um, it is exactly this, that if we are not careful, then the ecosystem is in danger of breaking down. I don't think we can take it for granted. I think we have to work at it. As a leader, Fox has to help shape it. Um, and there is obvious threats, but there are equally opportunities. Um, depending on how we play our hand, it'll be one or the other, I think. Um, my biggest challenge, I think, is how do we retool our business 
which has learned to shave one way for the last 15, 20 years to shave the other way. It's really tough if you try it, right? Um, you know, we have, like I said, 13, 1400 people. Uh, they have expertise in making channels, distributing them, marketing them, but we have to learn new tricks now, uh, with, and that are, they are in the area of production, um, development of intellectual property, as well as um, this whole digital world. It's a very different world, and we have to adjust to it. Um, we have decided that we have to learn that by moving our entire organization in that direction, not just by doing something in a separate cell. So that's a challenge. But if we pull it off, it'll be a huge force with great momentum. I know the, the industry, <clears throat> you know, as I said before, that without you, Sports Matters wouldn't be here. And, and, and uh, we are incredibly grateful for that. Um, the industry needs the support of the big guys, right? And, but but you, you saw at the beginning, we, we mentioned our mission statement, the, the healthy, sustainable sports industry in, in, in Asia. Is the sports industry there? This is the last question. Is the sports industry there? Do we have a way to go? Uh, wh what's your view on, wh what's your report card on the sports industry in Asia today? I think it's still early days, actually. Um, as I said, penetration for sport is low. Um, awareness and people playing themselves is low. Um, you know, the local stars are still to emerge. Um, but the makings are there because there's a relatively small but very passionate follower of sports. Um, so I think it's good times ahead. Brilliant, brilliant way to end this session. That's political. Positive, yeah, yeah. great opportunities out there. Maybe a checkbook in his pocket. Definitely a checkbook in Rohit's pocket. Um, a shaving lesson. Uh, but, but Zubin, it's taken 10 years. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for coming to Sports oh, Pleasure. And, Thank and you, good everybody. luck. All the best. Have a great session. Um, I'm now going to hand over to your pilot for this morning. Uh, please go crazy for ESPN's Jason Dacey.